we were discussing the theory of general linear rank statistics in the previous class we have uh, discussed the distributions then we also talked about the how to find out the asymptotic distribution of the uh, general linear rank statistics now using that theory we will derive the asymptotic distribution of mann whitney u statistic and the wilcoxon rank sum statistics for two sample problems we will show that they are actually asymptotic normal so this is proved in the following theorem so we consider that m and n tend to infinity m and n tend to infinity such that m by n goes to lambda that means the uh, where capital n is equal to m plus n that means basically what we are saying is that uh, it is not that abnormally one of the sample sizes becomes very large it will be that both of uh, them will uh, have a fixed ratio so here of course your uh, lambda will be between 0 and 1 then the standardized wilcoxon statistic and uh, similarly the standardized mann whitney statistic that is the w minus expectation w by square root variance w and u minus expectation u divided by square root variance of u this two have limiting normal 0 1 distributions under the null hypothesis that is theta is equal to 0. Uh, to prove this let us consider here the definitions of uh, this let me rewrite this thing suppose I consider T i j that is equal to 1 if y j is greater than x i and it is equal to 0 if y j is less than or equal to x i. So, if I consider u star that is equal to double summation T i j then actually it is equal to m n minus u because u was defined as the sum of uh, sigma d i j's where d i j was 1 when y j is less than x i that was it was reverse of this we are assuming that the ties are not occurring then we will have expectation of T i j is equal to 1 under the null hypothesis that is when theta is equal to 0. Let us consider say w star which is based on T i j's if we define this thing then we will have expectation of w also equal to 0 under h naught okay, that is when we theta is equal to 0. Now let us consider the conditional expectation of T i j minus half given that x k is equal to x under the null hypothesis then it is nothing but the probability of y j greater than x i given that x k is equal to x minus half. So, we can then write expectation of T i j minus half given x k is equal to x this is equal to 0 if k is not equal to i and it is equal to probability of y greater than x minus half if k is equal to i. Similarly, if I consider expectation of T i j minus half given y k is equal to y then this is equal to 0 if k is not equal to j and it is equal to probability of y greater than x minus half if k is equal to j. Now, we are assuming that uh, under the null hypothesis that is theta is equal to 0 x and y will have the same distribution x and y have the same distribution under h naught that is 
f. So, if we consider expectation of double summation T i j minus half given x k is equal to x, then that will become simply equal to. Now, you see here that I will get this value when k is equal to i for all other values it will be equal to 0. So, how many times that will occur when k is equal to i that is now x k how many uh, x i's are there there are n. So, this will become n times 1 minus f x minus half. So, this I can write like this. Similarly, if I consider expectation of double summation T i j minus half given y k is equal to y, then this is equal to m times f y minus half. Uh, you can see here this is x less than y. So, that is f y and here it is y greater than x. So, it is the CDF of y that is f. So, it is 1 minus probability y less than or equal to x. So, that is 1 minus f x here. Now, the projection of w star we are writing it as v p is equal to n times sigma half. So, this is i is equal to 1 to m minus f of x i plus m times sigma j is equal to 1 to n f of y j minus half. So, let us consider here n square root n divided by m n v p that is equal to square root n divided by m into sigma v i i is equal to 1 to m plus square root n divided by n sigma v i star i is equal to 1 to n. Uh, what are this v i's and v i star? We are considering v i and v i star they are uniformly distributed on the interval minus half to half. So, uh, they will have basically 0 mean and variance will become 1 by 12. So, we can now these are in the form of the summation. So, we can apply the central limit theorem on the two terms on the right hand side. So, basically what I have done I have adjusted these terms here. See this particular term because of the uh, probability integral transform this becomes uniform distribution f of on the interval 0 to 1 f of y j becomes uniform distribution on the interval 0 to 1. So, half minus f x i becomes uniform distribution on the interval minus half to half. Similarly, f of y j minus half becomes uniform distribution on the interval minus half to half. So, both of these are summations now and we apply the central limit theorem. So, applying central limit theorem on the two terms of the right hand side. What will happen? We will get square root n by m sigma v i i is equal to 1 to m this will converge to 1 by root lambda z 1, where z 1 is following normal 0 1 by 12. And in a similar way, if we consider v n star converging to z 2 and uh, v n and v n star are independent 
then the characteristic function of v n plus v n star converges to characteristic function of z 1 plus z 2. So, basically what we get then here. So, root n divided by m n v p this will converge to that means, I am considering the sum here after adjustment here. So, this is converging to 1 by root lambda z 1 and this is converging to 1 by square root 1 minus lambda z 2. So, this is coming to 1 by root lambda z 1 plus this means convergence and distribution 1 by root 1 minus lambda z 2, where z 1 and z 2 are independent normal 0 1 by 12. So, if we apply the linearity property of the normal distribution, we get that root n by m n v p converges in distribution to z which follows normal 0 1 by 12 lambda into 1 minus lambda. Uh, we can also talk about the asymptotic uh, variance. So, variance of square root n by m n v p this will converge to 1 by 12 lambda into 1 minus lambda and uh, variance of square root n by m n w star that will also converge to that is equal to n into n plus 1 by 12 m n that is also converging to same value uh, because this was just a linear combination of this thing. So, if we now uh, use the projection theorem which I gave in the uh, last class let me just repeat it here that v minus w expectation v expectation v minus w square is minimized by choosing p i star x as expectation of v given x i and uh, this is the projection and expectation of v minus v p square is equal to variance of v minus variance of v p. So, we use uh, this result here now. So, by projection theorem and the relation to which I just now showed you, we get that expectation of root n by m n w star minus root n by m n v p this goes to 0. <coughs> so, if we use the theorem which I gave for the limit part that is if w n is asymptotic distribution and expectation of u n minus uh, w n square goes to 0, then u n also has a asymptotic normal distribution. So, if we use this hence square root n by m n w star has the same limiting distribution as root n by m n v p. So, now if we write u star minus expectation u star by square root variance of u star and apply Slutsky's theorem along with limiting normality 
of square root n by m n w star we get the result. So, thus we have obtained the asymptotic distribution of the Wilcoxon rank uh, sum statistic and the Mann Whitney U statistics and both are shown to be asymptotically normal. Uh, now, in the Wilco uh, in the general linear rank statistics we are writing the statistics of the form sigma of C i a of r i. Now, in this one we may consider some sort of permutation of the ranks or you can say permutation of the indices then what happens to the distribution. Our next result is regarding the distribution of the permuted form of this. So, if C 1 prime C 2 prime C n prime is a fixed permutation of C 1 C 2 C n and uh, a prime 1 and so on a prime n this is a fixed permutation of a 1 a 2 a n then s is equal to sigma c i a of r i i is equal to 1 to n is having the same distribution as s prime that is equal to where the vector of ranks has uniform distribution over the set of all permutations of the numbers 1 to n. So, this is an interesting result and it allows us to uh, use the ranks in a that means, basically the way the data has been obtained it will not matter when we consider the uh, distribution of the uh, linear rank statistics which is based on that. Let me give the proof of this here. Since uh, C 1 prime C 2 prime etcetera they, this is a permutation. So, we can write C i prime as some C of alpha i for some alpha is equal to alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n belonging to r. So, basically this means that it is the ith value of C under permutation alpha. Similarly, we can consider a prime i as equal to a of beta i this is for some permutation beta of the numbers 1 to n. Let us define say a function from r to r as phi r is equal to beta composition with r alpha inverse here this be uh, alpha and beta are this. So, this is actually the composition of the permutations So, you can look at it like this that r is a uh, r is a vector in r that means, it is a permutation of the numbers 1 to n on that we apply beta from the left hand and alpha inverse from the right hand. So, here alpha and beta are fixed. As we have mentioned here that uh, these are fixed permutations. So, for fixed permutations this result is being proved here. So, we have already fixed alpha and beta here. So, now let us consider take any r belonging to r which is arbitrarily fixed. Okay. 
So, S prime that is based on i is equal to 1 to n that is equal to sigma c alpha i a beta r i i is equal to 1 to n. Why this is so? Because a prime i is equal to a of beta i. So, if I am writing r i here then this will become beta r i here. So, this I can now write as sigma of c i a of beta r and since I have changed here alpha i to i that means I have taken the inverse transformation for i then this will become alpha i inverse i is equal to 1 to n. So, this has then become equal to sigma c i a of phi i i is equal to 1 to n. Hence, S prime is equal to sigma C i A of phi i i is equal to 1 to n is equal to S with r replaced by phi r. Hence, S will have the same distribution as S prime. So, this we denote by this S and S prime have the same distribution. Let us repeat the argument here. I am expressing S prime which is sigma C i prime A prime R i as here C i prime has become C i again and here A prime R i becomes A of phi i here. So, you can say that it is a uh, phi is a 1 to 1 function because what is happening there is r, r is transformed using beta and alpha inverse. So, for a given r phi r is uniquely defined if that is so then basically the original combination will be preserved here for the distribution that means whatever probability we are saying uh, for that particular thing it will remain the same. As a corollary, if we consider like we are going 1 to n and then we take from the reverse side. So, if we consider the permutations which are counted from the left hand side, if we count from the right hand side, then the distributions must be the same. So, as a corollary, we have the following result that this the sigma c i a of r i this will have the same distribution as s prime that is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to n c i a of n minus r i plus 1. As a consequence we can prove another important theorem. Let r have uniform distribution over r that means we are considering each permutation is equally likely if either a of i plus a of n minus i plus 1 this is equal to a constant say k or c i plus c of n minus i plus 1 is a constant then s is equal to sigma c i a of r i has a symmetric distribution about n a bar c bar. Uh, we will take both the cases that is firstly when a i plus a n minus i plus 1 is a constant and secondly the case when c i plus c n minus i plus 1 is a constant. So, 
so a i plus a n minus i plus 1 that is a constant that is equal to k this implies sigma a of i plus a of n minus i plus 1 that is equal to n k this implies 2 a bar is equal to k or a bar is equal to k by 2. So, a of i plus a n minus i plus 1 that is equal to twice a bar. Uh, let me call this relation number 1. So, s is equal to sigma c i a of r i this is having the same distribution as s prime that is equal to sigma a i uh, c i a of n minus r i plus 1. So, as a consequence <coughs> let us consider the probability of s is equal to n a bar c bar plus s that is probability of s prime is equal to n a bar c bar plus s that is probability of sigma c i a of n minus r i plus 1 this is equal to n a bar c bar plus s this we can write as probability of sigma c i and here we change a n minus r i plus 1 as 2 a bar minus a of r i using this relation here because a i plus a n minus i plus 1 is equal to 2 a bar. Uh, this is equal to n a bar c bar plus s. So, that is equal to probability of sigma c i a of r i and this becomes n bar c n c bar. So, twice n a bar c bar this you bring to the left hand side. So, and you take this term to the right hand side. So, you get n a bar c bar minus s which is same as saying probability of s is equal to n a bar c bar minus s. So, this will prove that the distribution of s is symmetric about n a bar c bar. So, we have proved this uh, theorem for the case when a i plus a n minus i plus 1 is a constant. Now, let us take the second case. Second case is c i plus c n minus i plus 1 is equal to k, which implies that c i plus c n minus i plus 1 is equal to 2 c bar. Okay. Uh, this proof will be same because we can uh, sum over all the values. So, I will get 2 k and then since both the sums will be the same therefore, this is equal to uh, 2 c bar therefore, that is equal to. So, k is equal to 2 c bar. So, now let us consider s is equal to sigma c i a of r i i is equal to 1 to n. Now, this we write as c of d i a of i i is equal to 1 to n, where d i is the anti rank of. So, basically what we are doing is that if uh, observation uh, if the ith observation has rank r i. So, i will have the reverse that is d i that means, I have changed r i by i. So, what is the corresponding reverse value here? So, that is called c d i. So, this will then have the same distribution as sigma c of n minus d i plus 1 a of i i is equal to 1 to n. So, if I consider the probability of s is equal to n a bar 
c bar plus s then it is equal to probability of sigma c n minus d i plus 1 a of i that is equal to n a bar c bar plus s that is equal to probability of 2 c bar minus c d i a of i i is equal to 1 to n that is equal to n a bar c bar plus s that is equal to probability of sigma c d i a i again this term you take to the other side so this becomes n a bar c bar minus s that is same as saying sigma c i a of r i is equal to n a bar c bar minus s. So, once again you are proving that the distribution of s is symmetric about n a bar c bar. Uh, we can actually apply this result to various statistics. So, and therefore, they can be used for the testing problems uh, in the two sample testing problems. Let me give some examples. Uh, one is the called Wander Warden statistic. Uh, here, the scores are taken as based on the CDF of the standard normal distribution that is phi inverse i by n plus 1. So, if we consider the statistic as sigma c i phi inverse i uh, r i divided by n plus 1 i is equal to 1 to n. So, this will be equal to sigma c i because for m plus 1 up to n this will be 0. So, this is i is equal to 1 to m c i phi inverse r i divided by n plus 1. So, expectation of x under the null hypothesis is equal to m a bar. Actually, you can determine uh, a bar here. See, here if we consider the property of the standard normal C d f here that is uh, to determine a bar we use the fact that a of i plus a of n minus i plus 1 that is constant. See if I write say phi inverse i by n plus 1 is equal to say some x then this will mean that i by n plus 1 is equal to phi of x this will mean that 1 minus i by n plus 1 that is equal to 1 minus phi of x that is equal to phi of minus x. Okay. So, you will get minus x is equal to phi inverse of n minus i plus 1 by n plus 1. Okay. So, what do you get then? phi inverse i by n plus 1 plus phi inverse n minus i plus 1 by n plus 1 that is equal to 0. That means, this constant is actually becoming equal to 0. This means that your a bar is 0 and therefore, you will have expectation of x under the null hypothesis that is also 0 that is m a bar. Uh, we can also write the expression for the variance of x that is m n by n into n plus 1 sigma i is equal to 1 to n phi inverse i by n plus 1. So, this kind of statistics are quite useful for the two sample 
testing problems. Let me uh, also introduce the scale problem here. the two sample scale problem. Uh, okay, so, we have a random sample let x 1, x 2, x m be a random sample from the C D F f x and y 1, y 2, y n be another independent random sample this is from g y x. So, our null hypothesis is whether the two distributions are identical and alternative is that this is theta x for all x where theta is not equal to 1. So, this is basically the scale model because I have introduced a scale parameter here. So, when you have theta is equal to 1 then the two will be same. So, that is the null hypothesis. Uh, we may also consider it in terms of the variability. So, we if we consider say x square d g y that is equal to x square d f x theta x that is equal to 1 by theta square y square d f x y. So, that is equal to v x by theta square. So, theta greater than 1 will imply that v x is greater than v y and uh, theta less than 1 will imply that v x is less than v y. So, in some sense then we can say that this testing problem is equivalent to testing which distribution has more variability that is the distribution of x or the distribution of y. So, basically we can consider this null hypothesis as and the alternatives will be alternatives will be say theta is less than 1 that means, whether the variability of x s is less than the variability of the distribution of y or theta greater than 1 that means, whether the variability of x s is more than the variability of y s or simply say that the variability of x is different from the variability of y. So, all the three alternatives can be considered here. So, some of the two sample statistics that are introduced for the scale problem they are as follows. Let me give few of them. Certain two sample statistics for scale problems. So, here I am taking c i is equal to 1 for i is equal to 1 to m and it is equal to 0 for i is equal to m plus 1 to n. So, when we are mixing the two samples the first one I am assigning the value 1 and in the second one I am assigning the value 0. So, 1 is mood test statistic. In mood test statistic, we take the scores as i minus n plus 1 by 2 square. You can easily understand what does it represent here. It will represent that how much difference each value basically when we put a r i. So, n plus 1 by 2 is the mean rank here. So, how much each rank is different from this one. So, this is a measure of variability of the ranks and therefore, if I consider uh, if I consider the statistic based on that for example, if I write the mood statistic as sigma r i minus n plus 1 by 2 square i is equal to 1 to m. So, so basically this is the rank of x i in the sample. So, if the 
ranks are closer to the mean value of all the that means uh, the sample is well mixed up that means x's and y's are well mixed up and therefore it will mean that theta is closer to 1 whereas the more variability will imply that m is large so we can consider here uh, expectation of uh, that is equal to m n square minus 1 by 12 n a bar will be equal to n into n square minus 1 by 12 and variance of m is equal to m n by n into n. I am not giving the derivations here, but this can be done in a easy way. m is small is equivalent to less variability of excess that is theta is less than 1 and m large will imply that more variability that is theta is greater than so, this can be used for testing this test of hypothesis here. We can also consider uh, another statistic which is uh, named by several authors actually Friend, Ansari, Bradley, David, Barton. So, if you look at this Moody statistic here it is taking the square deviations here. So, if from the square deviation we take the absolute deviations then we get this statistic. So, these are all very natural choices for the score functions here. So, Ansari Bradley is given by sigma r i minus n plus 1 by 2 i is equal to 1 to m. Actually, there are uh, several variations of this that means, whether you take directly like this or so. So, this one is actually Ansari Bradley choice. <coughs> uh, let us take the case when n is odd that means, say uh, n is equal to 2 m minus 1 kind of thing. If that is so, then n a bar that is equal to sigma modulus i minus n plus 1 by 2 that is becoming sigma i minus m that is 2 m minus 1 plus 1 by 2. So, i is equal to that is equal to sigma m minus i plus sigma i minus m. So, i is equal to 1 to m minus 1 and this is from m plus 1 to 2 m minus 1 corresponding to i is equal to m this term becomes 0. So, so if you look at this, this is becoming m into m minus 1 by 2 and uh, this will also give the similar thing minus m into m minus 1 by 2 plus sigma j j is equal to 1 to m minus 1. So, this actually gets cancelled out. So, you simply get m into m minus 1 which is n plus 1 by 2 n minus 1 by 2 that is n square minus 1 by 4 here. So, if n a bar is this one then we are able to get the value of expectation a that is equal to m n square minus 1 divided by 4 n. Of course, this I have done for n odd. If n is even say n is equal to 2 m. In that case, 
you consider n a bar that is equal to sigma i minus 2 m plus 1 by 2 that is n plus 1 by 2 i is equal to 1 to 2 m. So, again we split into two parts i is equal to 1 to m then this is equal to 2 m plus 1 by 2 minus i plus sigma i minus m sorry 2 m plus 1 by 2 for i is equal to m plus 1 to 2 m. Once again we can easily simplify these terms this becomes m into m plus 1 by 2 minus sigma i i is equal to 1 to m plus sigma j j is equal to 1 to m minus m by 2 that is m square that is n square by 4. So, a bar is then equal to n by 4. So, expectation of a in this case becomes equal to m n by 4. So, variance of a can be calculated. Once again, if uh, actually the interpretation of this is same as the Moots statistic, uh, because if uh, a is large, it will mean that there is more variability in the x data that is theta is greater than 1. So, basically we say that large a indicates theta greater than 1, a small a indicates theta is less than 1. Now, uh, some variation of this uh, form has been given here. See, you are considering the absolute deviation here. So, and we are taking direct sum here. We can consider we may also consider a reverse form a i is equal to n plus 1 by 2 minus as you can see the logic behind it that this is just a little variation from this. This form is actually called Frand Ansari form. So, this function let me write i is equal to 1 to m n plus 1 by 2 minus r i minus n plus 1 by 2. So, that is equal to m into n plus 1 by 2 minus basically Ansari Bradley. So, it is just the reverse one. So, a small f indicates theta greater than 1 and large f indicates theta is less than 1. Expectation of f will be m into n plus 1 by 2 minus expectation of a and the expectation a term I have already calculated here when n is odd then it is m into n square minus 1 by 4 n and when n is even it is equal to m n by 4. Uh, there is yet another variation of this which is called David Bartle uh, variation. you can consider a i as this is the Ansari Bradley choice, but you shift it little bit that means, basically it is the adjustment of the uh, even and odd value. So, basically so, b is equal to sigma a of r i i is equal to 1 to m that is equal to m times n plus 2 by 2 minus the friend Ansari choice that is this choice here. Because if I take this minus this minus in the bracket then this will become the friend Ansari choice. Therefore, once again we can uh, obtain this is also the n plus 2 by 2 
माइनस एम इन टू एन प्लस वन बाई टू प्लस अंसारी ब्रेड ले चॉइस सो हियर लार्ज वैल्यू ऑफ बी इंडिकेट्स दैट थीटा इज ग्रेटर देन वन एंड ऑफ कोर्स स्मॉल बी विल इंडिकेट थीटा इज लेस देन वन देन देर इज ए सीगल टू की चॉइस इन सीगल टू की चॉइस वी टेक ए आई टू बी इक्वल टू टू वाई If i is even, it is equal to twice i minus one. If i is odd, for one less than or equal to i less than or equal to n by two, and uh, it is equal to two times n minus i plus one. If i is even, and it is equal to twice n minus i plus one minus one. If i is odd. n by 2 less than i less than or equal to n, and s is equal to sigma a of r i. Now this is a small n here. Uh, small values of s indicate that theta is greater than 1. Uh, we have one final comment here that. this uh, mood friend ansari ansari bradley and david barton these statistic they are more sensitive to one sided hypothesis That is theta greater than one or theta less than one, okay. But the Siegel to key, this is more sensitive for theta not equal to. Uh, let me briefly mention one more here, that is called the. Clarts normal score. In this one, we define phi inverse i by n plus one whole square. Uh, you can compare it with the one which I gave earlier. That was phi inverse of i by n plus one. Vanderwaardens statistic. In this one, we had phi inverse i by n plus one, and here you can see this is equal to phi inverse i by n plus one whole square here. So the Clarts statistic is given by phi inverse r i by n plus one whole square i is equal to one to n. Uh, I am not getting too much into detail of uh, the working out of this. Of course, it is slightly more complicated than the Vanderwaardens and statistics because if I take this one, I am getting the sum is equal to x square plus one minus x whole square. So that is not a constant here. So this will require some working out to get the outcome of this. Um, in the next class, I will discuss about the Sukhatme's two sample test. I will discuss the uh, null distribution of this, and we will also introduce the concept of the consistency of the statistical test you might have seen that when we consider the uh, parametric test so in the parametric test we discuss about the uh, power of the test and the uh, say we consider the type 1 error and the type 2 error but in the when we consider the two sample test since we are not having the form of the distribution so we are not using the Uh, you can say most powerful or the that the, the usual neyman pearson theory is not being applied here and uh, therefore uh, 
the test functions are based on least linear rank statistics and uh, the exact distributions are quite complicated. So, we consider the asymptotic properties of these things. So, in the next lecture I will be discussing about the uh, asymptotic properties of the tests here. Firstly, I will discuss about the uh, Sukhatma's test and then we will discuss about other asymptotic properties.